We're in the business of helping young talent find jobs abroad. Maybe I should consider having a CEO as well. You have to be kind of a jack of all trades. Your company is your actual life. It's like your kid right. and you have to be with it 24 seven. I wanted to get away from our normal lives and just force ourselves to focus on building the company. The company is, is nothing, it's just an idea, right? So maybe there is a, there is a long bearded uh, version of me studying uh, philosophy at university somewhere. Do you agree that every company should be created to be sold later? I mean, it's, that's, a, that's a hard uh, question to ask. Hello everyone, today we are in Stockholm and here with me is Simon Nielsen, the CEO of WorkWise Group. Hello Simon. Hello Sergey. So finally we met after a few years of cooperation. Yep. By the way, do you remember how many years we are working together already? Yeah, I think it's uh, we're coming in on our second year, I think. Yeah, it was a while ago. So Simon. Uh, we'd like to know more about your business, about your company, about okay. you, yep. as much as you decide to tell us. Okay. So let's start from the very beginning and like tell us what is WorkWise Group. Sure, so WorkWise Group is a recruitment technology company. We were founded in 2014 uh, by myself and my brother Philip. Uh, and we're in the business of helping young talent find job abroad. So find a job outside of their home country, basically. Young talent. Young, mostly young talent. We, we don't exclusively work with young talent, but what we tend to see is that the young people want to go for an adventure, to move to a new country, to experience a new, um, let's say, lifestyle. It, we tend to see that it's the younger talent that do it. Yeah. You know. So do you work mostly on European market? Yes, uh, we're mostly focused on Europe right now. We are active in nine different markets. Um, so that means that we're helping people from nine different countries to find a job outside of their home country. Uh, and, but the, the jobs and the career opportunities that we offer across our platform uh, are across many different countries, but most of them tend to be in Europe. I would say like 5% of them or 10%, 5 to 10% are in exotic locations like South Africa, Thailand, etc. But that's more unique, uh, unique opportunities. Okay, and you mentioned that because family business, you found it with your brother. Yes, that's right. Okay, because as far as I know, it's quite popular in Europe having family business. Yeah. So how is it for you working with your family? No, it's great. It's great. So I think uh, me and Philip, we have different strengths and, and weaknesses. And I think we complement each other great. And we've done a, a, we're actually sharing the CEO responsibility. So I'm co-CEO and he's co-CEO. <laughs> and so when we when we read the, let's say you know when we read I don't know like management uh, literature and stuff like that people recommend against Cosio. Uh, we yeah. read a lot, but for us it works great. Um, and the way that we have divided um, the responsibilities that Philip is handles the commercial and financial aspects. I focus on product and strategy and mm -hmm. uh, operations. So <laughs> it, it works great. Yeah. Maybe I should consider having a CEO as well. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. it's too tiring. Okay, but in general, why specifically recruitment domain? Why this industry? Have you maybe faced some issues with that before? Or, I know, found some unique way how to help? Yes, sure. Okay, so the reason that we founded the company from the beginning is that both me and Philip, when we were young, like between 18 to 20, we, we wanted to move abroad, live abroad for some years and get some experience, international experience. And, and I actually moved to the UK and I worked there for, for a great company. Uh, Philip moved to Southeast Asia for, for two years as well. Uh, but at the time, we couldn't find like a service, a product or a platform that would help us um, or that we could go to or we could find both job opportunities abroad for Swedish speakers, mm -hmm. um, maybe some advice, guides, etc. So we went ahead and, and built it. Okay, then maybe let's talk a bit more about you and your role in the okay. company. You already mentioned that you have divided responsibilities with your brother but what i know what was your main challenge on the position of the co-ceo as it appeared some of the main challenges um i think uh, it differs so year to year we have different focus areas goals and challenges so it always uh, differs but as i think as a as a like a startup entrepreneur or entrepreneur with a relatively small team 
you have to be kind of a jack of all trades. So you have to know a little bit about everything uh, instead of a lot about a small thing. So it's hard to say. Right now we're looking to grow the team, uh, expand, so recruiting for us internally. It's a, it's a, it's a big focus area for us. Uh, but also marketing, getting new job seekers, because as you know as well, uh, it's a it's a job seekers market, yeah. and so that is the the main goal. So, and if we took uh, this question, like if we already started, what industries face uh, the biggest talent shortage nowadays? Uh, there are many industries that are facing talent shortages. Um, I know the tech industry that you work in um, uh, is, of course, uh, the famous one, but uh, we operate in a niche where. Um, on the B2B side, we, we do what we call multilingual talent acquisition. So our clients are looking for people who speak specific languages. Mm -hmm. There's a big gap in supply and demand in our industry, meaning that a lot of companies across Europe are looking for German speaking talent, Swedish speaking talent. It can be customer service, sales, marketing, translation, content, and there's not enough people uh, in our industry. So I would say, of course, tech, and then multilingual uh, talent. Um, but you can also look at, I don't know, any, any number of industries like healthcare, uh, etc. So there are a lot of um, gaps yeah. in the talent market, yeah. So, and you also help tech companies hire tech talents? Well, uh, we don't focus too much on tech. Our more main focus is language. So we mm -hmm. work with tech companies um, that are looking to hire Swedish speakers, German speakers, etc., and then any um, different type of roles, any any kind of role really. But there aren't that many, let's say, development positions that require you to speak a specific language. It's mostly English, in you know. Thank God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, then um, what about COVID nineteen reality? Did it uh, change? your business model and in general, like our companies changing their recruitment requirements and strategy? Yes, I would say so for us, it was a really challenging time. I mean, we're in the business of moving people across uh, borders yeah. and between countries. And obviously that was pretty challenging during 2020 and 2021. Yeah, it was two rough years for us. We, we took a step, step back and reassessed. We made a small pivot as well. Um, but in general, um, we've come out of it stronger, you know, with a better equipped company and a platform for growth. Um, so that's our, our story. Um, and in terms of what, what we noticed during COVID was that um, employers were quite quick on rebound because we, we, we work with a lot of tech companies or companies like, I don't know, anyone from Netflix, for example, their customer service work with uh, Amazon, Mercedes-Benz, Apple, etc. And these companies were selling a lot even during the pandemic. So they needed, they needed talent. Uh, so we understood that the, the companies or the employers were willing to hire, but the talent was a little bit afraid of moving abroad for these positions. How was the healthcare system in a new country? You know, are airports safe and stuff like that? So we, we, had, we had the business coming in, but we had actually a shortage of talent. Okay, and how do you think which hiring model is now the most popular, like remote, on-site, or hybrid? Like yeah, I think, I mean, I think it depends on industry and company, depending on culture and what type of role and position, but of course we see an emergence of, of hybrid, remote, um, depends a little bit on the kind of the security um, uh, requirements that the company has as well, allowing fully remote versus hybrid. Yeah, that's my actual question, like, how do you think, why are some companies still hesitating about hiring remote developers, not even developers, but in general, yeah. employees, teams, why? Yeah, I think uh, I think there are different types of reasons. So of course, uh, something that has been talked about a lot is like knowledge sharing um, in an office environment where you can meet people, you know, by the water cooler, you know, there's a transfer of, of knowledge and culture and stuff like that. So I think that's a, uh, maybe that's a little bit of an untangible, but that's a reason. And then of course, what we mentioned is like security, uh, requirements for really. you know depending on the industry and if you let a employee uh, work from home uh, but has access to very sensitive data sometimes some employers are a little bit hesitant about that so that's what we see in, in our industries that we serve um, and those, those will probably be some of the main ones okay but what is your personal opinion or better to say what is the condition and what is the rule in your company 
in our company, we, we do like to meet each other at the office, but we do also do a hybrid model where you can work from, from home as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, for example, at uh, monthly meetings for the entire company, everybody should be present and stuff like that. So it's a hybrid. Um, but yeah, because that's that's kind of new reality. People, you know, we had to try work from home or remote during the pandemic, and we saw that it worked mm -hmm. uh, mostly, right? So there's no reason, no real reason, if the employees are looking for for that kind of that model, to as an employer say, no, we're not going to do it. So yeah, we we, we do in a hybrid work hybrid. Right? And do you agree that some employees, when they work remotely, they might be even more efficient than working? from the office, again, even meeting uh, I know, at the cooler yeah. and talking to people or going smoking. Sure, yeah. So yeah. Would you personally continue hiring, for example, developers in your company for remote work? Yes, of course, of course. I mean, it's, it, it has worked great. So, but I think it's a difference, like if someone is used to do it as well, for example, I mean, in the development, you know, amongst developers, it's pretty common. And so, the people who have done it for some time, they they are like, they're very used to it. It's it's normal for them. They are highly productive. Yeah, it's, it's not an issue at all. That's great. Then uh, what is the biggest recruitment challenge that company, like any company might face? Recruitment challenge that any company might face. I mean, there are, there are a bunch of them, but I would say like uh, the main thing is actually like acquisition. So getting, let's say you have you have a bunch of positions to fill. Number one is just attract applications, get people interested in working at your company yeah. and apply. So at the top of the funnel acquisition part, because of the supply demand situation where the, there aren't enough, uh, let's say skilled um, talent on the market, um, that was, I, that is the main challenge. And of course, if you solve that, then it will be new challenges further down in the recruitment and onboarding funnel. You know, I believe the same, situation we have in our industry and even like in our company that you can offer the highest salary yeah. as a developer, but especially when it comes to senior developers, they are more interested in some challenges like complex projects right. than in high salaries only. Yeah. So then how do you think which impersonal skills are now of the greatest value for companies? I mean, it's, that's a... Uh... That's a hard question to ask, but I think, um, I mean, of course, one that goes without saying is like, we, we talk a lot about digital native. So that means that, you know, this is not talking about developers specifically, but just let's say talent in general is that someone feels like they're natively in interacting with technology. So, you know, jumping on a new tech stack or in a new CRM is not that hard for them because they've worked in different environments and, and they can adopt quickly. I think that's a, that's a very important skill to have. And um, communication always, right? Yeah. So yeah, I would say those are those are some of the main ones. Okay, then let's talk about uh, cooperation between our company, what we help you with. So sure. like we, as we said before, have uh, been partnering already for a few years for a couple, supporting you with building your equipment platform. Yeah. So, and you said that mostly you work in uh, like Sweden, Germany, Denmark, France. Mm -hmm. So the question, are you planning to extend your business to any other parts of the world? Yeah. Like, what is your next stop then? Sure, so I think we want to expand to all of the main European markets first, and then we will go outside of Europe. And we are looking at some specific uh, countries that we, that we want to open in. So you have something in mind, some specific countries? Yes, but it, it, isn't, it hasn't been decided yet, and uh, yeah, we will see which one. Okay, then a bit tricky question, taking into account that you already have your tech partner, mm -hmm. hopefully, yeah. but for you as uh, for the CEO, mm -hmm. what is the most important requirement by choosing development partner? So I think it, uh, there is a bunch of different answers to that. I think the first thing uh, that is important when establishing a new business relationship or potential partnership is to see that both parties are interested to understand each other, right? So it's not just a transactional thing, but okay, if we were gonna work together, that you, in this case, you know, Otakoi, actually it takes time to understand our business, understand the ins and outs, like what actually matters for, for us and how we work, etc. cetera. Um, so I think that is the main thing. And it goes both ways, like for, for, for as a client as well, to understand your, 
uh, your partner and your your um, your provider. So yeah, I think that is number one for me in the beginning. Okay, and I believe we were not the first one tech partner that you had. Yeah. So how it happened that you start working with us and in work with Ukraine in general? Sure. Okay. So the reason why we started work with with you guys was was because of this thing that I, I felt like through through the you know the beginning of our communication that you guys took time to to understand what we need and how how we work like mm, i do think that our business is a little bit complex to look at from the outside like we move people between countries and just specific countries and it's based on languages and and stuff like that so but you took the time to understand it and that felt good because without understanding our vision and what we're doing it's very hard to to kind of provide uh, value added services i would say so that's kind of that's why and then of course the team is great the, the team that we have uh, they are awesome and we you know they have of course all the technical skills that we need but also what i felt with uh, with your team that was different than, than many others that we're talking to is that you actually provide um a lot of support to your developers so that means um development conversations quarterly talks you know the hr is actually very involved and all of these adjacent support and service that I know that you give to them. That's really pleasant to know. Then uh, let's talk about maybe some next steps. So, so far you have WorkWide Group, you yep. Group as a product. Yeah. So what uh, would be the next steps? like? And maybe do you have any bold ideas for the future projects? Yes. Uh, so some of them, of course, I can talk about some of them. I like to keep for myself, but let's say, let's say what, what we have now, we have actually a really fun project with the, uh, with the team, which is we're going to change the, the front end framework mm -hmm. and together with this project, which we've planned for a long time, we also decided to do a complete rebranding and on top of that, a new website design. So we're doing this. So basically the front of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the platform is going to change entirely, both from a tech standpoint, but also in a design and, and aesthetics. Okay, but maybe you consider an option to expand to, into some other domains, like except for recruitment. Yes, so we've thought about basically, but what we want to build is basically a platform that solves for all of the challenges that a person might encounter when moving from one country to another for a job. So imagine if I would move to, I don't know, um, Portugal to work. I live in Sweden, but I want to move and work in Portugal. Now, of course, I have to find accommodation in Portugal. I have to understand about taxes. I need to register in Sweden for, I don't know, just so the government knows that I've left the, com the country. And there are a lot of things like that. My things, I need to move them. Uh, so I need to transport them. To so a lot of these things. And what we want to build is a platform that mainly focuses on your career and work, but has all of these adjacent services that would help you in that process. So today, for example, a few months ago, we launched a partnership with spot the home which is an accommodation platform and so today you can find accommodation on our platforms uh, across we have 50,000 uh, available apartments across europe so these are the things that we want to build more things like this for the job seeker yeah that's that's really cool and if to talk about you simon okay. so what would be your career path if not work wide group like have you ever thought about that what would be what what i would have done yeah. if i didn't start so yeah i think there are probably like two different uh, versions i think one i was very interested in in real estate so that is maybe then the more let's say business version of my life would probably go into real estate to some, some sort but also i think maybe studying uh, i was all, always interested in and politics and philosophy. So maybe there is a there is a long bearded uh, version of me studying uh, philosophy at university somewhere, maybe teaching or something like that. So you see, everything might happen. And yeah. you know, if you talk about real estate, yeah. your platform can be easily used for real estate direction. That that is true. Yeah, that is true. To some extent, we are connected to that with helping finding accommodation. So yeah. Okay, and then what do you love about your job the most? Um, I think what we do it creates value for all stakeholders. So that means that number one, we're helping the, the job seeker uh, to find a job in a country or in a city across Europe that they, they really want to move to. So, and of course, a, a great job with that. We're helping the company, um, the employer, our client, to, to hire a new great colleague. 
and we're making money for ourselves. So everybody is, is winning. And so I feel that when I, um, when I work and when we do our work, we're actually contributing to something uh, positive. So then another question, what do you hate? What do I hate? So what, well, yeah, um, that's a good question. You know, it's always like you have to decide or you have to get balance between work and personal life. Sometimes in some cases you have to spend all your time at work. So what about you? Like, yeah, does it take all of your time or you have enough time for your personal activities? Yeah, I think it doesn't take all of my time, but it takes a, uh, most of my focus. So I think about um, our work and how to how we can do great things at the company for like uh, most of the day. So that's where I, so I think like probably it's like opportunity cost because if you focus 10, 10 years of your life on building something, then of course you didn't put those 10 years into, I don't know, studying something else or becoming I don't know, a football player or <laughs> something like that. So I would say that's probably the main thing. Okay. Then maybe you could also tell us a bit more about the company's history. Sure. Yeah. So we were founded in 2014. Um, and at the time we actually, we moved from Stockholm, me and my brother to a small town at the, uh, at the border to Norway in the, in the forest and we wanted to get away from our normal lives and just force ourselves to focus on building the company. And so that's what we did. And we stayed there for two years, something like that. Then, and, and we didn't find like exactly what we were doing right now. At the beginning, we were helping Norwegian companies hire Swedish talent. Mm -hmm. So it was helping people find a job abroad, but it was much closer and very specific. And then of course we pivoted to where we're at. And, and yeah, so we stayed in that, in that town for like two years and then we needed to hire people. So we moved to another mid-sized town called Karlstad in Sweden, which has a university. Uh, we moved there um, and at that time we also started, we started in Sweden, I mean with the platforms and then we opened the German market, which was probably the best decision we made because it's the, it's the biggest market for us now. I understand you completely. You understand? Yeah, you for just our, came for from case, Germany. Yeah, yeah, for our case, it's completely the same. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great market. And so we opened in Germany a couple of years into our company's existence. And that's really when, when the growth started to happen. And yeah. Okay. And what are the plans for expanding? Right now we are growing the team in Karlstad. So the people that are working in our company are mostly from other European countries than Sweden. So we have, you know, German colleagues, Dutch, um, Danish, etc. So they moved to Kalsa to work uh, at our company. And then of course we have uh, our team in Lviv. Uh, so we hope to expand both the team in Lviv as well as this team in Kalsa, mm -hmm. um, as well as open an office abroad pretty soon as well. Some specific place or you don't want to talk about that? No, no, that's fine. Uh, no, I, we have uh, like three locations we're looking at. We're looking at uh, Dublin, Lisbon, uh, as well as Malta. Why this place? Because they are close to sea and you like fish? <laughs> yeah, it could be, but uh, actually those are some of the markets where we have most of our clients yeah, yeah. and where people tend to want to move to as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I believe some reasons relate to taxation. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, there is a reason why there's a lot of companies in these places as well, but yeah. it's, mo it's mainly because of the being near our clients, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, taxation won't hurt if it's better. <laughs> I won't complain. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, you know, um, everyone knows about um, some Swedish stuff, so uh, maybe there are some specific Swedish way of doing business, like Swedish style, Swedish... I don't know. Yeah. Is there anything that you can mention that, you, that comes to your mind? Like, you know, everyone thinks that uh, German guys, they are very punctual. They mm -hmm. always in time, even though uh, from what I know, their railway is not no? okay. uh, at all. So how do you think? Is there any specific Swedish way of doing business? Yeah, yeah, there definitely is. And I think we, we noticed this in, uh, when we are hiring for our own team. Uh, for example, from Germany, from, from Netherlands, etc. They, they do say that I want to move to Sweden um, in part because I like the, the working culture there. So it, there is a very distinct working culture in, in Sweden. And I think it's a, one of flat hierarchies, mm -hmm. um, collaborative uh, processes, um, mm -hmm. and let's say involved decision making, something like that. 
And meatballs. And what? And meatballs. And meatballs, yeah. <laughs> of course. Of course, yeah. So that's great. And maybe you could give some recommendation to other young entrepreneurs who just want to create their own business. While you're thinking, uh, like, when somebody asked me this question, yeah. especially uh, if we talk about IT industry, I always tell them better stay good developers <laughs> than go into business. So, and why do you say that? Uh, you know, because uh, together with um, some better position, better, like wider opportunities, uh, you can do whatever you want here. Yeah, you can use your creativity to develop your business, but yeah. also you get a lot of responsibility, right. a lot of headache. You cannot like, look at your clock and say, okay, it is 6 p.m., I'm done for today. Yeah. Because your company is your actual life. It's like your kid right. and you have to be with it 24 seven. Yeah. And sometimes the amount of stress might be higher than the amount of you know, pleasure and result. Luckily, not always, yeah. but sometimes. Sure. So uh, my point is that not everyone is ready to that. Yeah. And not everyone say prepared or even knew about that. And uh, a lot of people think that being an entrepreneur, having your own business, it's yeah. only about having fun, you know, starting your working day when you woke up, even if it's after lunch yeah. and finishing whenever you want. So, but actually it is not, especially I believe first years. Yeah. So, I mean, the first couple of years, of course, we can call it the, the dog years or whatever. Um, you have to, to work really hard, of course, and uh, to, to get revenue, to get income, right? That's always the, the killer for premium companies. They don't get enough revenue. And at some point they, they do kind of implode or whatever. Uh, so my tips to young and friends, it's like, yeah, I guess it's, uh, it's, it should be pretty obvious, but income and revenue, it's the top priority, top, second and third priority. Because this is the main reason why small companies fail, right? Um, and so just make sure to have that prioritized. And then I would say the second thing, which is some a mistake that we've done, um, that we are actually trying to fix a little bit right now, it's like don't involve bureaucracy and processes too early because it might slow growth. So just have be creative, have a little bit of a wild west approach, <laughs> just a short, make sure that you make as much money as possible so you can survive and the business can grow. And when you start making profit, big profit or not, well, enough profit, then you can start involving processes and bureaucracy to make it more, uh, uh, let's say, framed in. Uh, but that's when you're a little bit secure. You don't have to, uh, the company's existence doesn't have to be threatened. I think that those, those would be my main tips. And how do you think, what is the main purpose of any business? Like you have a company, yeah. you created it, you already overcame the, I hope so, hardest period of its sure. uh, life cycle. Yeah. So now you are enjoying your work. So what is the final stage? Do you agree that every company should be created to be sold later in the right moment, or you consider better like another option as we discussed with you today, having some family business that will go from one generation to another generation sure. and so on. Yeah, I think so. This is the kind of, you know, the American, let's say, um, view of the company's purpose is to generate shareholder value is, is one point of view. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think there are, I mean, because what is a company? A company is, is nothing it's just an idea right yeah. and some people came across and said yeah this is this is a company but it's it's just a it's a construct it's a construction really it's it's not really in that sense and so it can be whatever you want it to be and i do think in that sense that if you can create a company that generates shareholder value while actually impacting with something good there shouldn't be any reasons not to go and build such a company so i think you can use a company as a vehicle or a platform for anything and uh, you should take the opportunity to do so. You know, the idea of selling the company also is about to become rich at once and uh, live your best life without thinking about money. Sure. Because you every day, you think about work, you allocate some of your time for work. Yeah. And you're losing your best uh, years. So, and uh, when you sell your company, you receive some like, enough amount of money to recharge, to spend some time having fun, yeah. do whatever you want, and later come back with the same ideas. So 
I mean, with new ideas. With new ideas, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and starting something new. So, do you agree with that? Or, I mean, you cannot imagine yourself in this situation. That's one way to go. But at the same time, if you do that, you lose the platform that you've built. So, a company, again, is not only like a revenue or profit generator, it's also a platform or a kind of a, something that you can have impact in the world with, with everything from connection to your vendors, to your clients. So, it's like a Without that, um, you would be you're sure you would have maybe a lot more money in the in the bank, but you will have less interactions, maybe less possibility to impact the world in some way. So it's hard to say, but uh, yeah, I, I can understand people that do that, of course. Yeah. But what about experience? Like uh, you gained a lot of experience, sure, starting everything from scratch, and if you had chance to start from the very beginning, yeah, but having money, right? But being not just younger for a few years yeah but having this experience having more money yeah and starting everything again that is that is interesting indeed but it, there's nothing that forces me or anyone really well depends on the situation to to, to sell the company to to start new right do you can see some of these guys some of the big entrepreneurs they yeah, they yeah. seem to be jo- able to juggle a lot of different companies or positions but uh, yeah. especially having to see you Exactly, exactly. So I'm co I'm a 50% CEO, so I should have more, more opportunities. So no, I can see, yeah, I can see that that's like, yeah, you, of course you think a lot about like, okay, what could we, what would I have done if I started this company today with all of these, exactly. uh, <laughs> with all of the mistakes behind that I've learned from and uh, yeah, of course it would be different. Um, but you know, we're still a pretty young company and we still have a lot of growth ahead of us. And so I, I don't, cons- I consider myself to be pretty early in my entrepreneurial uh, journey. So I still have a lot to learn and a lot of mistakes to make, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I can totally yeah. understand you. Yeah. Simon, except for being co mm-hmm. what are your hobbies? What do you live for? Well, I have different, I, I like being in nature. So I recently started to, to hunt a little bit. So I do some hunting um, and then I, Go to the gym from time to time, not not uh, often enough, but uh, and, I, and I like TV series. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, so I watch TV series on the, on the yeah. So you're like staying at home, laying on the couch, and watching series. You have to do that sometimes. Yeah, you need to recharge. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. What about hunt? Is it kind of Swedish tradition? I wouldn't say so. Like it's it's also a way for me to recharge. So I go. I go out to nature and you know you kind of go out and get your own food and you kind of see the entire chain of like where does the food you eat actually come from and you are involved in taking care of it and all that so i find that very kind of rewarding and not reward but like recharge recharges me a lot um, so i do that some weekends it's not always but yeah and i also know that you like fishing fishing now that's my brother that's my <laughs> brother so he forces me to come with him on some of his uh, fishing trips uh, but it's it's fine, but he, he really loves it. Yeah, I can do it from time to time. So, Simon, uh, you are the CEO of Swedish company. You located in Sweden and you spent most of your life in Sweden. Yeah. How do you think what makes Sweden so special? I think there is, you know, it's a, it's a safe country. It's a, it's a relatively wealthy country. You have to, you've got a welfare system that's quite quite well developed and so it's a it's a good place to start a a business and a life Um, and I do like the kind of working culture as well I mean uh, in terms of collaborative flat hierarchy and these things so it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty good country to live (laughs) and work in I would say so yeah what bad moment you would mention about Sweden (laughs) about Sweden bad moments about Sweden I believe if you ask anyone yeah about Sweden I mean about bad stuff yeah the first thing that would come into my mind, yeah. uh, I believe taxation. Like everyone taxation. heard that in Sweden, taxes are really high. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, I could say that. Of course, as an entrepreneur and a, and a business owner, I might be a little bit biased there. But so I would say, yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty high taxation in Sweden. I think the bureaucracy around the taxation is quite uh, quite uh, a challenge as well. Um, it's very hard to do on your own. You need to have professionals involved because, yeah. Big, big tax code constantly changes and it's it is very complex and we again forgot about meatballs and about meatballs. while saying about advantages of, of course of course the meatballs which we just had a few, a few hours ago that's a good perk of living in sweden 
No, but I think it's it, I think it's a great country. Yeah, it is. It is a great country. Uh, of course, it has its challenges. Um, I think it's, yeah, but in general, a good one. I mean, I wouldn't mind a little bit more sun and, uh, <laughs> and higher temperature. Okay, and um, your company helps uh, others to move to relocate to other countries. Yeah. So, what about you? Where would you consider to relocate if there is a need or chance? Sure. So, of course, I already spent some time living living abroad early in my life, which was extremely rewarding, um, and I will definitely do it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, where would I do that? I mean. Anywhere where I could, I could, I could work, and I can have an impact for the company. So I would say like Southern Europe. Uh, it can be Spain, Portugal. That looks pretty nice. I've been, I mean, to those places. It's it's warm, and and there's you know we have clients there. Mm -hmm. I would say Ireland is uh, it's not as warm and stuff like that, but there's a lot of opportunities there. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm open to to moving to any different. I'm not set on one place. I think all of these different countries have their own culture and. You know that's why we're so passionate about what we do is we believe that you know moving to a new country actually gives a lot of growth it doesn't maybe necessarily always feel like that when you're in in the moment when you're living somewhere and you know it's day-to-day -day, um, life but when you move back and when you come back to your comfort zone you actually understand that okay it gave me a lot of new understandings not only about people and life and society but yeah it just it just helps you grow makes sense but would you consider yourself being digital nomad, like person who lives anywhere, having just a backpack with a laptop and uh, flying from country to yeah, country? Yeah, I, I could consider. I, I would consider doing that for some time. It it looks really nice. Yeah. Everywhere where it is enough of sun, enough enough of you know space for self development. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the approach. Unfortunately, I cannot do the same. I'm already family guy. Yeah, but okay. still, yeah. completely agree with you. Yeah. Well, while I can do that, I should probably probably do that. Of course, I have some you know responsibilities back here in in Sweden. But as because we have a hybrid situation with the, with the work process, I could do that for some time. And yeah, I mean, I could combine that with meeting clients because we do have clients across across mostly across Europe, but honestly across the world. And so yeah. So and you from time to time flying to meet them personally? Yeah, we do that. So our recruitment team as well as our business development team fly out on, on a quarterly basis to meet with clients. So mm -hmm. once every quarter, uh, of course, it's been less now with the pandemic, uh, which hopefully we can put behind us. So you'll go back to normal and start meeting clients. And it's it's really a lot of fun to meet mm -hmm. and see the you know office space to actually because to then we can see the entire cycle, you know, from the first conversation we had with the candidate and we can follow them and, you know, we talk, talk to them on the phone, we, we interview them and everything like that. And then actually when we fly out to meet the clients, we can go meet the candidates that we actually <laughs> hired there as well. So it's, it's very, very rewarding. Maybe you should also consider having some interviews with success stories yeah. with the candidates, with the clients. Like you're doing right now. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Okay, Simon, then we'd like to thank you for this opportunity to have this interview. Sure. And, you know, um, in the very beginning of our interview, you pretty good mention, like pronounced the name of our company. Yes. For most of our clients, unfortunately, okay. uh, it is not so easy. <laughs> okay. So uh, if you could just one more time repeat the name of our company for our viewers. Sure. Otakoi. You see? So thank you, Simon. Thank you, Sergey. It was nice to meeting you here in sunny <laughs> Stockholm. Yeah. Yeah, and hope to see you again next time. Same pretty here. soon, and we wish only success to your project. Thank you, Sergey. It was okay. good meeting you. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.